Hi, I'm Matthias. Um, I'm working in the Android Systems team or Android kernel team in London. Um, and um, this is actually a, a talk or like a project that in, was inspired by the last um, LPC I in, uh, attended in, in person on this one, 2019, um, being asked, um, what are the patches that you actually have in Android on top of an, uh, an Android, uh, on top of a Linux kernel that, that you need reasonably to boot. And so we started maintaining um, an actually a, a patch series for that. And but first we started, what is what is the definition of our technical depth in this case? Um, so we have a, like with GKI, we, de we developed an, an upstream first policy that is quite strict for every patch that we uh, submit, especially to Android mainline or to um, our release branches. We require that patches are upstream, uh, at least posted to the list, uh, at least tracked um, in a way that, um, that we have discussed whether this should actually go in the Android tree or upstream first. Um, first, there are some uh, there are some difficulties about release plans and, and some patches we take actually posted from list. Um, but in general, um, we we try to minimize the patches that we take at all. Of course, we have some uh, patches that we need just in the Android kernel when it comes to configuration, build systems. Um, so let's have a look. What are these patches? Um, so as I said, this was it was um, uh, uh, an idea from uh, APC19. Um, we, we created a patch series based on uh, just a, a killed patch series that we constantly rebase, um, basically working after after Greg's merges from upstream. Um, we, we try to rebase uh, like whenever there's a new patch we ingest it. If we have a, a, a new merge, then we rebase on top. And eventually, we even pushed it out as, as the Android mainline tracking branch. Please don't check right now. It might be a bit outdated. But um, in general, you can do that. And you can apply the patches on, on a vanilla kernel upstream. And you get the same result as Android mainline. Um, as I said, we, we um, do serious rebases on new merges. We ingest new uh, patches. We even fold them. We make sure that um, if there are some leftovers from merge conflicts or like from merge conflicts resolutions that we clean them up, that we really have clean and neat and, and um, readable patches that are at the end uh, on top of, um, you know. we even have like, if there's a from list patch landing upstream, it will obviously drop from the list. So we reduce our technical depth again. Then we do some classifying things that we never will upstream because they're just not relevant, um, like build system, like. Android specific build system changes. Um, we do metadata updates to make sure that every every patch has an owner, at least known by us, uh, that we are able to work with. And uh, yeah, at the moment we have 224 patches. Um, some of them are upstream reverts that we temporarily uh, revert, but we know exactly what we actually revert, so we can can work on that. Um, then there are some in the series you will see some annotation commits. Um, basically grouping the patches and, and, and subsystems or uh, build system configuration changes. Then um, 42 changes are actually pending upstream. They are either backports from upstream that we needed earlier that will resolve at some point. Then we have from list patches that hopefully will resolve soon, but we will be able to um, follow up. Some of the uh, changes that we are sent upstream are now converted to Android patches because they were not successful in its current form right now. And then there is like uh, a bunch of um, patches that are only relevant for us. And most of them are in the area of uh, very, very are really local configuration changes, vendor hooks, um, symbol exports. Um, like the majority of these changes are not really um, upstream relevant in its uh, in its current form because like nobody wants actually vendor hooks to be upstream um, and symbol exports uh, that have no user upstream um, will also not go upstream. Um, then there are some areas a bit of a hotspot network networking scheduler and some drivers, but in general it's not like crazy much. Um, you can look up the series. There's there's the link here on the slides as well. And, but looking at them, like what happened in the last couple of years with it, we, we cleaned them up massively. Um, we see like we dropped quite some lines. Uh, we upstreamed a lot of uh, like quite some changes, like uh, several lines, uh, several thousand lines got upstreamed, less files get touched. And we also mm, like 
Lee Jones, in this case, made the, the series very, very neat and, and organized. So we actually have um, a good a good view on what, what are the patches on top. It's not just like a bunch of random patches collected and, and fix ups. And it's, it's really a neat series. Um, and as you can see, there are some hotspots like incremental FS uh, alone just takes half of our out of three patches uh, in lines. <laughs> uh, welcome. <laughs> And, and, and then there are some minor hotspots, but just 1,000 lines just go in the GKI dev config that is just not relevant upstream. So it's actually quite little, and we could maintain over the last year an, an average of like around 200 patches that we have. Um, so there is this tooling um, that, that we have to, to automate all these things, like uh, following after, and, and that we just focus on the conflict resolution, and it's usually quite quick as we, if we follow along the, the Android mainline. And depending on how, how bad the mergers are that come from upstream, but the less out of three we have, the, the better it is to merge. What is it now? It's effectively an upstreaming work list, or at least we, we know these patches will not go upstream. Uh, we can check upstream mergers that come to, to cross-check. Sometimes they are just like, uh, like debris left over in the patches just from the mergers. And we can also use these patches to cleanly revert features that we don't need anymore or things that we just don't want anymore. For example, uh, upstream reverts, we can make sure we actually bring the code back as uh, without any, any other difference to upstream. That's it. Any questions? Um, it, it's more like a FYI um, and, and how we uh, like enforce or like how we make sure we are reducing um, the, the, the out of three code as much as we can and how we keep track of it. Um, but if you have any questions about that. Has the uh, AI effort uh, added to the technical debt or paid, helped pay down technical debt? But I think initially, when we started GKI, I think we, the series had like 30 patches, um, like in total on top. Um, and then we accumulated a lot for the first couple of like, I think first year, several hundred patches and it peaked at 800, but it was mostly about uh, folding, organizing them. So at, at some point we like came down again with, with GKI and more more um, things getting upstream and us also bringing more things upstream to around 300 and um, eventually just like this like we we we, or we, we plateaued on this 200. Um, so yes, GKI initially caused a bit of more out of three because we also had to put in the facilities for builds, uh, hermetic tool chains, um, and vendor.